happens. I have a book today called If You Want a Friend in Washington, Wacky, Wild, and Wonderful Presidential Pets by Aaron McGill. Now, <clears throat> we learned a lot about the two presidential candidates in the campaign, and one thing that we didn't talk a lot about was their pets. And this is a book about presidential pets over the history of our country. As the president, you are in charge of the whole of the United States. This is a lot of responsibility. Citizens might not agree with your opinions, ideas, or political party. Whether Whig, Federalist, Republican, Democrat, or Independent, many presidents hope for a reliable and steadfast friend. President Harry S. Truman once famously said, If you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. And a dog is what many presidents got. These are pictures of many presidential dogs. Plenty of presidents found a friend in Fido. Abraham Lincoln's dog was actually named Fido, which is Latin for trust in or confidence in. But Lincoln thought life in the Washington might be too stressful for Fido. So when he was elected, he found Fido a new home with a close friend. Fala, Franklin D. Roosevelt's dog, held the esteemed title of honorary private in the U.S. Army. George H.W. Bush's dog, Millie, wrote a book for the First Lady, Barbara. After Millie passed away, the Bushes showed their gratitude by dedicating a dog park to her in Houston, Texas, affectionately naming it the Millie Bush Bark Park. Barack Obama's dog, Bo, did not write a book for his owner, but there were plenty of plush toys created of him. Everyone could snuggle with Bo. President Truman didn't follow his own advice. When a supporter from Missouri sent him a cocker spaniel named Feller, he quickly gave him away. Maybe a dog was not the kind of friend he had in mind. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a cat. And a cat is what many presidents got. Here's Blackie Coolidge and Piccolo Meanie Hayes. The first cats to take residency in the White House belonged to President Lincoln. He loved to rescue strays. Legend has it that he liked talking to them. Dixie is smarter than my whole cabinet, and furthermore, she does not talk back. There were many Siamese cats in the White House. The first to arrive, Siam, was a gift from the American diplomat in Bangkok, Thailand to President Rutherford B. Hayes. President Bill Clinton's cat, Sox, enjoyed perching on his owner's shoulders. Sox also did important therapy work, visiting students and senior citizens. You might think that when you are president, you can keep whatever kind of cats you want. Nope. The Sultan of Oman sent President Martin Van Buren two tiger cubs. Just as Van Buren was preparing for the tiger's arrival, Congress stepped in. The tigers were confiscated and sent to a zoo. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a more practical pet, like a horse. <clears throat> and a horse is what many presidents got. Here's Tex and Leprechaun Kennedy. George Washington, our nation's first president, had very bad teeth. He went through many sets of dentures. Washington did not want his horses to suffer the same misfortune. As a result, he had a fastidious toothbrushing regimen for all of his horses. Before cars, horses were not just loyal companions, but also modes of transportation. John Adams, the second president and the first to live in the White House, had extravagant taste and built 12 stalls for his horses in their fancy carriages. When Adams did not win re-election, he left his horses and carriages to the incoming president, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson did not agree with Adams' politics or with his taste. First Lady Jackie Kennedy's horse, Sardar, along with pony friends Tex and Macaroni, found themselves in the middle of a scandal when protesters revolted against their wardrobe, or lack thereof. No saddles and shoes, they were completely nude. The horses, of course, did not care whether they were clothed or not. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should choose a pet that doesn't require clothing, like a farm animal. And a farm animal is what many presidents got. Cows, billy goats, sheep, chickens. President Woodrow Wilson put his pets to work to help the country during World War I. His flock of sheep nibbled at the White House grounds, keeping the lawns tidy so gardeners could join the war effort. Selling the sheep's fleece was very lucrative. Some of it was auctioned off to help the Red Cross. Some of it was used to make yarn to create products such as socks for shoulders for soldiers. President William Howard Taft enjoyed fresh milk. A senator from Wisconsin thought of the perfect gift for him, a cow. Her name was Pauline Wayne, but fans called her Miss Wayne. 
The bovine became very well known and even toured the country. One of her stops was at the International Dairymen's Expo in Milwaukee. People were so eager to try Miss Wayne's milk that once, when an agriculturalist spotted her grazing on the White House lawn, he decided to hop the fence and sneak a taste. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a bigger animal, one you can't sneak up on. <clears throat> and a bigger animal is what many presidents got. Grizzly bear cubs, Roosevelt's five bears, lion, zebra, wildcat, hyena, and coyote. That's Teddy Roosevelt. What? Alligators. What do you give a president who has everything? An alligator. Legend has it that that's what the Revolutionary War hero, the Marquis de Lafayette, thought President John Quincy Adams might like. It is said that Adams kept the alligator in the bathroom and would show it off to his guests. President Calvin Coolidge was given a pygmy hippo by businessman Harvey Samuel Firestone. Billy, as the hippo was named, was immediately donated to the National Zoo. He became a star exhibit at the 1939 World's Fair and his descendants can be found today in zoos across America. The prize for biggest pet goes to a herd of elephants, a gift from the King of Siam to President James Buchanan. The only problem? The elephants never arrived. When Abraham Lincoln, the next president, got word that the pachyderm parcel was en route, he politely declined the shipment and sent them back. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a smaller pet, like a bird. And a bird is what many presidents got. There's a parrot and a barn owl and a duck. Mockingbirds were among the most popular fowl to grace the White House. President Thomas Jefferson had a few of those beautiful birds, but his favorite was called Dick. Dick had free reign to the president's office, and Jefferson enjoyed harmonizing with his bird on the violin. President Abraham Lincoln signed an official proclamation to set aside the last Thursday in November as a day of thanksgiving and praise. In honor of the new holiday, someone sent Lincoln a turkey. Lincoln's son, Tad, took a liking to it. He named the bird Jack and taught it to follow him around. One day, Tad and Jack interrupted a meeting to beg his father to save his new friend from becoming holiday dinner. Jack was the first turkey to be pardoned, beginning a Thanksgiving tradition that continues today. President Andrew Jackson owned an African gray parrot named Paul, named Paul that had a filthy mouth. The president and Paul went everywhere together. Unfortunately, Paul outlived Jackson and attended his owner's funeral, and he had a few things to say. If you want a friend in Washington, Maybe you should get a quieter, smaller critter. And a small critter was what many presidents got. Silkworms, rabbits, raccoons. President Theodore Roosevelt had critters big and small. Some of his family favorites were five guinea pigs. The president named them after people he admired, including Admiral Dewey, Roosevelt's horse riding companion, and the highest ranked officer in the Navy. The Roosevelts also had a couple of flying squirrels. Their names have been lost to history, but they were known to hide in the Roosevelt children's pockets, waiting for lumps of sugar. First Lady Louisa Adams, the wife of John Quincy Adams, found life difficult at the White House, but she sought comfort in some tiny companions, silkworms that she kept on mulberry trees. She harvested their silk and spun it into fabric that she used in her sewing products. Almost every president to call the White House home has found companionship and comfort in a pet. Andrew Johnson was one of the few exceptions. Even though Johnson didn't officially have a pet, one day some mice wandered into his bedroom. The mice arrived while Johnson awaited charges of impeachment. He fed them from his, little, from his family's mill, addressing them as little fellows. Watching their antics surely brought him peace and comfort during this uncertain time. After all, even when you are leaving Washington, a friend is welcome. In the back of this book, they have a list of all the pets that each president had. Donald Trump did not have any pets, uh, but the Bidens have two dogs, Champ and Major, that they are going to bring with them to the White House. You can look up and find pictures of them online. <laughs>